Ordering Real Numbers in a Real-World Context, Lesson 1.3c. Calculations and estimations in the real world may differ. It may be important to know not only which are the most accurate, but which give the greatest or least values depending on the context. If we have square root of 5 feet and 2 and 75 hundredths feet, which one's shorter, which one's longer? So remember what we've learned in 1.3a and 1.3b. By using perfect squares, we can approximate the values of irrational numbers to put them in order from least to greatest or maybe even greatest to least. The square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 9 is 3. Those are perfect squares. We can find the approximate values for the square roots between them by using these perfect squares. Square root of 5, well, that's more than square root of 4. That would be about right here. And 2 and 75 hundredths would be closer to 3. We know that the square root of 5 is less than 2 and 75 hundredths. Four people have found the width across a creek in meters using different methods. The results are given in the table. Order the distances from greatest to least. So remember, it's greatest to least now. The first thing we do is write each distance as a decimal. To compare them, they need to be written in the same format. We have Sam with square root of 52, Bob with 37 fifths, Emma is 7 and 3 tenths, but the 3 repeats, doesn't it? And Jim is 7 and 1 fourth. We need to write all of these as decimals. We can start with the square root of 52. Using perfect squares, the square root of 52 is between the square root of 49 and the square root of 64, but it's closer to the square root of 49. It's just a few numbers away from the square root of 49. It's pretty far away from the square root of 64. We know it's between 7 and 8, but closer to 7. The square root of 49 is 7, the square root of 64 is 8. We know it's somewhere between 7 and 8, but closer to 7, so we can try 7 and 2 tenths squared. We multiply 7.2 times 7.2, and we get 51.84. That's not quite 52. We can try getting a little closer, so we can try 7.3, another tenth. We multiply 7.3 times 7.3, that's 7.3 squared, and we get 53.29. Well, now we went way over 52. So we know it's closer to 7.2. An approximate value for the square root of 52 is 7 and 2 tenths. Now we look at 37 fifths. Well, 37 divided by 5 is 7 and 2 fifths. As a decimal, that would be 7 and 4 tenths. This one's already written as a decimal. We have 7.3 and the 3 repeats, so that would be 0 0.3333. We can say it's approximately 7.3. For 7 and 1 fourth, that would be 7 and 25 hundredths. So now we know that square root of 52 is about this much, and we've got our 7.4, we've got our 7.3, and we've got 7.25. We can plot them on the number line as points. Here's 7.2, 7 and 2 tenths. That would be the square root of 52. We have 37 fifths is 7 and 4 tenths. That's over here. We've got 7.3. That would be about right here. And 7 and 1 fourth would be right here in between 7.2 and 7.3. So in order from greatest to least, we've got the greatest would be 37 fifths, then would be 7 and 3 tenths, then 7 and 1 fourth, and then the square root of 52 as the least. Let's try another one. Four people have found the perimeter of a lake in miles using different methods. Order the distances from least to greatest. So now we're going, we're going from least to greatest. Pay attention to the order. We have the square root of 150 plus 6. We have 
5 and 73 hundredths times pi, we have 55 thirds and we have 18 and 4 tenths. We write each distance as a decimal and we multiply 5 and 73 hundredths times 3.14 for pi. So remember, it's going to be approximate. It's not going to be exact because those are the approximate digits of pi. We're going to get approximately 18 for Bill. 55 divided by 3 comes out to approximately 18.3, 18 and 3 tenths for Joe. And Susan is already in a decimal as 18 and 4 tenths. We have that one. Now we need to figure out Mary. We can quickly find the decimal equivalents for Bill, Joe, and Susan. Now let's worry about Mary. So the square root of 150, 150, is between the square root of 144 and the square root of 169. Well, 12 times 12 is 144, and 13 times 13 is 169, so we know it's between 12 and 13. We can try 12 and 2 tenths times 12 and 2 tenths, and we get 148 and 84 hundredths. We try 12 and 3 tenths to get a little closer to 150, and we get 151 and 29 hundredths, so we went over. So we know it's between 12.2 and 12.3. An approximate value for the square root of 150 is 12 and 25 hundredths. It's in between 12.2 and 12.3. We can find a better approximate value by using another decimal place. So we're going to use the hundredths place. We know it's in between 12.2 and 12.3. So we write 12.20 and 12.30, and we look at it as 20 and 30. And what comes in between 20 and 30? 25. So we can approximate it as 12 and 25 hundredths. We need to add 6 to it because it says plus 6. So we get 18 and 25 hundredths for Mary's. So in order from least to greatest, we've got 5 and 73 hundredths times pi because that's 18. The next greatest would be the square root of 150 plus 6 miles, because that's 18 and 25 hundredths. The next one would be 55 thirds, because that's 18.3, and then we would have 18.4. They're in order from least to greatest. To order a set of real numbers, we convert each number to a decimal equivalent. We use estimation to find decimal equivalents for irrational numbers. We must pay attention to the instructions for whether we are supposed to put the numbers in order from greatest to least or least to greatest. Remember, if the problem has calculations in units, such as kilometers, miles, meters, feet, the answer must be given in those units. We wouldn't write just 7 and 4 tenths, if it was 7 and 4 tenths meters, it's important to write the unit. And that goes with any math problem. Do you remember in early grade school, you would add 5 cookies plus 3 cookies, and the answer would be 8 cookies. And you'd have to write the word cookies in order for it to be correct. Same thing with this, except now we're using units of measure. Now we're finished with lesson 1.3, and we're going to be moving on to 2.1 split into three parts. The first part is using patterns of integer exponents. Remember to use perfect squares to help approximate values of irrational numbers. And remember, to better approximate a value, add another decimal place like hundredths or thousandths. Then you'll be able to pick a decimal number that's between two decimal numbers. I hope you understand everything so far and I hope you're doing well. And I also hope you join me for the next lessons. Bye.